Welcome. In this session, we continue our discussion Father Jim started last time we met about our rights and responsibilities as Catholic Christians. Father Jim reminded us of the great commandment of Jesus that we are to love, love God and love our neighbor, no exceptions. Now we turn our discussion to our communal responsibilities as members of our parish, neighborhood, state, nation, and members of our global community. The Catholic bishops in their document, Economic Justice for All, highlight the rights of all people with these words. First among these rights to life, food, clothing, shelter and rest, medical care, and basic education. These are all indispensable to the protection of human dignity. All persons have a right to security in the event of sickness, unemployment, and old age, the right to a healthful working condition, to wages, to other benefits sufficient to provide individuals and their families with a standard of living in keeping with human dignity. What is being stressed here is the intersection of our rights and our responsibilities as Christians. In order to fulfill the gospel and our responsibilities Jesus taught us, we must consistently work to protect the rights of all people. To do this, we must honor people by responding and shouldering our own responsibilities. We're called to work to enhance our own vision, to see our entire world as family, as a linked global community of God. We are missioned to join together hand in hand as members of our global community to assure that all people can live, work with the dignity accorded to every person created by God. We must hold our local, national, and world leaders accountable to share the rights of all for a fair wage, for working conditions, and the dignity of the worker without regard to differences and boundaries of any kind. Pope Francis reminds us that collectively, as a Christian community and world community, we need to respond to the call to put aside boundaries and differences of any kind and truly embrace our responsibilities as the people of the gospel. Today, we can often fall into the sin of declaring and demanding our own rights, while at the same time ignoring our responsibilities. It is so easy to get caught up into our own culture, which is often focused on what is good for self, and lose sight of those who have so little, who are struggling, those who have lived decades in resettlement camps, waiting far too long to find a place to call home. For those who live on the streets without homes and often without food, those driven from their homes for political, social, or religious reasons. All this can seem overwhelming. However, we can have an impact by doing simple things, like when we help out at a food pantry, like the Penfield Ecumenical Food Shelf, or volunteering at a city school like School 50, or helping out in shelter like Dimitri House here in Rochester. A powerful and lighting experience for me is our homeless outreach ministry. In this ministry, we go out, rain, snow, or shine, and encounter the homeless in our streets. Our purpose is twofold. First, to help the homeless transition to stable, permanent housing. The second is to inform our community to take away some of the blindness from our eyes, to help others see that right in our own community, there is indeed great need and homelessness. One evening a month, we go out with social workers and representatives from various agencies to help the homeless find housing, to provide support services. We also provide food and hygiene items to those we encounter. This ministry has impacted me greatly and helped me see poverty and homelessness personally. This helped me put a face on what homelessness looks like. It's so easy for me living comfortably in the suburbs to re be removed from the suffering that is so close to me. It's so tempting to think that someone else or some agency was taking care of everyone in need. Meeting the homeless face to face and hearing their stories helped me open my eyes to homelessness as people of God, all deserve dignity and respect. All have the right to a home and to live with dignity. To 
to understand homelessness and poverty and racial equity is not an abstract and individual problem, but a societal one. This is a critical issue we must call our leaders to address and hold them accountable. Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew tells us, When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Jesus needs all our hands, minds, and hearts to address the inequities in society. We're called to raise our voices, to work to address inequities, racism, refugees, and poverty in our society and our world. It is not enough just to say that everyone has a right to food and housing. We must actively advocate for this and hold ourselves and our leaders accountable for bringing about change. We can use so many excuses, such as those that are being impacted are not like us. They don't live in our neighborhood, state, or nation. They need to help themselves, or we can't help everyone. But the gospel reminds us that our responsibilities always outweigh our rights. This is hard and difficult work. This work requires sacrifices on our part, but is required of us as people of faith a people called by God to reach beyond ourselves, to work together as community to address injustice and inequity in our nation and our world. The Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith, and it concludes with the blessing, go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Our faith can never stop at the doors of the church, and the Eucharist we receive must propel us outward to burst forth from the doors of the church with strength and conviction to change and transform our world, to do the will of God. Now this can seem so difficult to have an impact on these huge issues and problems, but I'd like to share the wisdom of someone I truly respect, Deacon Bill Coffey. Many years ago, I asked him about how best to make an impact. His words were simple and profound, and I tried to use them every day. He told me, just show up. He told me, don't try to overanalyze which cause or ministry is most needed or most important in the world. Simply pick something that resonates with you and just show up. Start somewhere and let the Lord guide you. The Lord won't lead you astray.